So in terms of drinking water, I want to get back to why you probably tuned in, um, but I just wanted to give the backstory and how, why that's important. Drinking water in the U.S. is complicated, and I'm hoping to make this really not complicated. And first, I wanted to start with all of the choices that we have in front of us. Um, wherever you live, you have the choice of municipal versus well, depending on where you live and how far from water treatment plants, um, versus bottled water. Um, there are 160,000 in the United States, 160,000 water treatment, wastewater treatment plants, 160,000. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, and what are the risks to that, but we also have wells, private wells, wells that serve, um, small towns, wells that serve neighborhoods, wells that serve individual homes. And they have their issues as well as do bottled water. Um, we have the choice of filtering or unfiltered or filtering our water or buying water that's filtered or unfiltered. Um, we have different types of filtration systems we can employ. Um, and then that also draws into question water sustainability, particularly people who have water restrictions like in California. We have glass bottles versus carboys, you know, which are the big blue plastic containers that are in office buildings and office water, um, uh, uh, refrigerated water. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking, but anyway, um, uh, you know what those big blue things are. And you can see them outside of many big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's, and they're just kind of piled up. So you have choices of glass versus those or, or stainless steel or other ways of carrying your water. There's also water testing um, issues that I want to briefly talk about as we go through this. And I want to talk about, as I mentioned, water bottles, the differences in those, because that's also an opportunity where contaminants can make their way into the drinking water we drink. So um, this is um, a committee opinion from the um, obstetrician gynecologist in 2013. This was their first um, actual uh, position statement, which came out in 2013, which seems awfully recent. Um, but this is uh, one of their issues. And they their opinion basically states that reducing exposure to toxic uh, environmental agents is a critical area of intervention for obstetricians, gynecologists, and other reproductive health professionals. And you know what this really is saying is we are really missing a huge amount of information that needs to get to our patients. But I put this in here to talk about drinking water with pregnant women, especially given the exposure risks and given what we're now finding in the obstetrician gynecology world and, and neonatology world. Um, during pregnancy, just to talk, go back to this topic for a second, neurons are being formed at a rate of 250,000 per minute on average over the course of a pregnancy. And that's a lot of opportunity for things to go awry. So when we get that number in our head, you can see how vulnerable um, the brain is, okay? So I wanted to make sure I just got that in there. Now, drinking water. Starting at the very basics, we most of us have heard this. We are made of water. We're made of water. Different parts of the human body have different levels of concentration of water in those organs, but essentially the human body is made of a large proportion of water. So the question really is, why are we not really paying attention to this? Um, I find, you know, even being part of the health and wellness world with my, you know, my foot in there, my foot in Western medicine, my foot in environmental health, that no one really talks about water um, in terms of exposures per body mass index over time, and why instead of worrying so much about what I should eat, fats, or proteins, or keto, or, um, you know, South Beach, or paleo, or this or that, or whatever, I never really get a lot of people shouting on mountaintops about water, water quality and why it's so important. So hopefully this will um, open people's eyes. Water in the human body is used for a number of um, reasons. We moisten our air when we breathe it in. We carries nutrients to cells. It regulates the pH of the human body. That, that's so key, especially the kidneys work to do this as well. Regulates body temperature, which is going to be important as we move into higher temperatures. Um, it protects and cushions our vital organs. It cushions joints. Of course, I have a lot of rheumatology patients. And as we get older, we lose water content in a lot of our tissues. And um, that, that leaves uh, an issue for us when it comes to uh, rotator cuff tears and Achilles you know, rupture without doing very much. And a lot of that has to do with water content. Um, it also removes waste and toxins through sweat, through urine, through feces, 
um, through our GI system, through our vaginal canal. So we have all of these ways that we eliminate water and water is part of what it pulls some of these harmful chemicals. So let's talk about the different types of water systems. We have in public drinking water, we have again, as I mentioned, 186 more or less public water um, treatment plants um, in the US. About 86% of the US relies on water from these public treatment plants. And that's really important. So the vast majority of the US drinks from city water, tap water. Um, the public water supply by definition, anything that's considered a public water supply has to have at least 15 connections, whether it's 15 homes, 15 schools, 15 apartment buildings, what have you, but it also ha has to serve at least 25 people. So that's the definition by the EPA. Public water supply comes 80% from surface sources and 20% from groundwater underneath the ground. So again, most of our water comes from the surface of the, of the earth, lakes, streams, sewage. People don't like to hear that, but sewage is actually turned into drinking water um, and everything that goes into sewage, which we'll talk about. But again, I wanted you to get the big picture um, here is that most of our water really comes from what, what's on the surface of the earth. Um, and that's quite important when you think about what's on the surface of our earth. Um, more than 97% of 160,000 U.S. public water systems serve fewer than 10,000 people. So again, based on population also uh, directs how much testing and how regularly testing is done on these locations. I'll repeat that. Big cities get tested more, have more oversight, have more um, um, evaluations, more regular testing than say a very, very rural public system. Even if it's connected to public water, it still gets tested less frequently. Follows the same laws uh, under the Safe Drinking Water Act, but that doesn't uh, directly affect the amount of testing in terms of intervals. So that's pretty important. So this was an image um, from our book we put together, we designed. Um, it's really quite important. Um, it is showing many, visually, many of the ways that water is contaminated, um, whether it's above, you know, sort of surface water versus aquifers, which were lower, deeper into the earth. They have their own issues, but pretty much waste from manufacturing plants, runoff from agricultural pesticides like nitrates, nitrites, gasoline leaks. We have lots of um uh, you know, storms um, nowadays that are affecting water supplies. Um, we saw that in Texas with the freezing water, freezing conditions. We see that in, um, you know, oil spills. We see it in flooding conditions. Um, animal waste and dead animals certainly make their way into our water system from rains. Um, but we have drugs that are flushed into the water supply from our toilets. Um, antidepressants, blood pressure medications, and anti-anxiolytics, um, you know, um, anti-inflammatories, opiate um, degradation products. So we have lots of stuff that comes from urine that will make its way into or towards a, um, a water treatment plant. Um, and then of course, there are things that are added, chemicals that are have to be added in many ways to the, the water that comes to a treatment plant to disinfect. And that can include chlorine, um, ammonia, and we'll talk about that. And then it comes out and goes to houses, homes, schools from that water treatment plant. Um, and it could travel maybe 30, 40 miles like my company does. Um, it may be very close, but it's going to go through either lead piping or PVC piping or some type of piping. And after the water leaves that municipal treatment plant, they're done. So whatever comes to your house, good luck. Um, basically, it's any it's you know anything that comes from that that unit. The treatment plant people, I've interviewed them. I've done three hour tours. They do everything they're supposed to. They do everything right, um, and they have the screens up and they're looking for um, you know terrorism in the water system. They're they're just doing a great job of what they are supposed to do. It's really the overall picture of, of the laws and what happens to this water uh, in terms of its infrastructure um, that we have to be concerned about. 